Hello everyone, today we're going to be adding and subtracting decimals. We did pretty good on this on the pretest, but there's a few misconceptions that we had that I think we can clear up in this video. So make sure you're writing in the steps and the examples, trying the problems before um, I go through them in the video, and I think you'll do great. The first step when you add and subtract decimals is you have to make sure that you write the decimals vertically um, and then make sure that you actually line the decimals up. It's very important that you line up the decimals because you have to have your place values lined up when you add and subtract. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to fill in any missing place values with zeros. Your numbers aren't always going to go to the same place value. So this is a strategy that can help with those types of mistakes. After you have done that, the last thing you need to do is add or subtract. When you are um, adding or subtracting, your decimal just drops straight down into the problem that you are solving exactly where it is lined up. So we're going to solve five examples. I'm going to ask that you solve them all prior to me doing them just to see if you're getting them right in the first place. And uh, when you're done, then you can start working on your homework. So let's look at the first example. I would like you to try and solve four and seven tenths plus three and 58 hundredths. Go ahead, try that out and come back and we'll see how you did. Okay, so we're gonna put the first number on the top. So we have four and seven tenths on the top and I'm gonna add three and 58 hundredths on the bottom. Now you'll notice that my decimals line straight up. Well, as straight as that line was. So, and you'll notice that my ones line up, my tens line up, and I have nothing above my hundreds. So that's where step two comes in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a zero so that my numbers go to the same place value. Okay, now while I'm solving this, I add 8 plus 0, which is 8, 7 plus 5, which is 12. I write the 2 and I carry the 1 over to the 1's place. I'm going to right away draw or write my decimal into my answer because it goes straight down from the problem that you have. And then I add the last part, which is 4 and 3, which is 7, plus 1, which is 8. So it added up to 8 and 28 hundredths. If you did not solve the problem correctly, make sure you fix your mistakes so you have good examples in your notes. All right, let's move on to the next example. B is going to be a subtraction problem. If I give you 4... 48 and 17 hundredths minus 5 and 6 tenths. Okay, try that one out and we'll see how you did. All right, welcome back. When I look at this, now you have to remember when you're doing subtraction, the first number in your subtraction problem has to be the top number when you're writing them vertically. So if I look at this one, I have 48 and 17 hundredths. And I have to line up my decimals so the five has to go under the eight because that's in the ones place. My decimals line up and the six has to go in the tens place. And this is your subtraction problem. So I can add my zeros. I can put it here so they both go to the hundredths. You can even put one over here in the tens place if you choose, but you don't have to. 
So when I do my subtraction then, now that my decimals are lined up like they're supposed to be, I could do my subtraction. 7 minus 0 is 7. Oops, sorry about that. 7 minus 0 is 7. Remember, you have to subtract top minus bottom. This is a huge mistake that people keep making. They'll do 6 minus 1 here and put 5, but it's not 6 minus 1. It's 1 minus 6. So in this problem, I have to borrow from the 8 and make it a 7 and give 10 to the 1 and make it an 11. So I do 11 minus 6, which is 5. I'm going to bring my decimal straight down from my problem and put it in my answer. When I go to the 1s, it's 7 minus 5, which is 2. I can do that. And then 4 minus 0, which is 4 in the 10s. So the answer to that problem is 42 and 57 hundredths. Each of these problems is going to show something just a little bit different. Let's look at the next one. This next example is where I saw most of the mistakes on the pretest. If I take 7 and 9 tenths minus 1 and 37 hundredths. Okay, try that out and let's see how you do. All right, let's see. Remember, the top number has to go on the top in the subtraction problem. So I have 7 and 9 tenths minus 1 and 37 hundredths. Now, here's what I saw most of. On the pretest, what I saw is a lot of people wrote 7 here for the subtraction. Now, I'm hoping after the first two examples, you can see the problem with this. We do have them lined up like we're supposed to. That's great. But we didn't add the zeros like we should to show them to the same place value. If you have that zero written in there, then you can see what you actually have here is zero minus seven, and you can't do that. So we have to borrow from the nine and make it an eight, and this zero becomes a 10. So now when I'm subtracting my hundredths, it's 10 minus seven, which is three, Subtract my tenths, 8 minus 3 is 5. I bring my decimal straight down in my answer. And then my 1, 7 minus 1 is 6. So it's 6 and 53 hundredths. The same thing's going to happen when we go to example D. If I take the number 60 and I subtract 32 and 18 hundredths. What you have to realize is where the decimal is in plain old 60, okay? So try this problem and let's see if you know where it is and then come back and watch uh, the problem being done. All right, so the question was, where is the decimal in 60? When you write the number 60, if I put the decimal here, that's not 60 anymore. That's 60 hundredths. So that is not where the decimal goes in 60. The decimal in 60 would be right after the number because we can add zeros after that decimal and it still has the same value. So I can write the 32 and 18 hundredths there. And then you have to remember to write your zeros above the 18 hundredths so they go to the same place value. All right, now remember it's top minus bottom. So all of these are 0 minus 8, 0 minus 1, 0 minus 2. And that uh, makes it kind of tough. So we have to borrow all the way over from the 6. So let's show how this is done. I'm going to get a different color here just so we can... Um, see the difference. So if I borrow from the 6, I make it a 5, but that gives the 10 to the number just to the right in the 1, so this is a 10. So we're not even all the way over at the end yet. So now I have to borrow from this 10 and make it a 9 and give the 10 to the 0 in the tenths place. Still not all the way to the hundredths. So now i got to borrow from that 10, make it a 9, 
and give the ten to the hundredth place. Now I'm finally all the way to the end of my number, and I can actually do the subtraction. In the hundredths, ten minus eight is two. In the tenths, nine minus one is eight. I'm going to bring my decimal straight down in my problem. In the ones, nine minus two is seven. And then the tens, five minus three is two. I really want you to go back and change your answer if it isn't right. Make sure you have correct work and all of the borrowing shown in your notes so you know how to do it. Okay, our last example was a story problem. So let's read through this. You and your friend chose Stonefire for incentive day. You brought a total of $40 extra to spend on the games. If you spent $13.75 and your friend spent $15.50, how much money did you have left all together? Okay, try this problem out. See if you can do it. I will give you a hint. It is a two-step problem. And uh, let's see how you did. Okay, so there's actually two ways to solve this problem. Um, I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way, and then we'll talk about the other way. I would think that for your first step, what you would do is you would find out exactly how much you spent. So step one, you're going to add the two prices together, the $13.75 or, and the $15.50, to see how much you totally spent. So we're going to line up those decimals. $13.75 plus $15.50. They already go all the way to the end, and they will do that when it's money, because money always goes to the hundredths. I add 5 and 0, which is 5. 7 and 5, which is 12. Carry the 1. I'm going to bring my decimal straight down in my answer. 5 and 3 is 8, and 1 is 9. 1 and 1 is 2. So you spent... $29.25. This is how much you spent. Now what you want to do is find out how much money you have left over. So in your second step, you're going to take the $40 that you had and subtract the $29.25 that you spent to see how much you have left. Now remember, 40 is 40 with your decimal at the end. And since it's money, you know you can put your two zeros right away. Minus the $29.25. I have to borrow all the way over from the 4. So this 4 is going to become a 3. And the number in the 1s becomes a 10. I borrow from the 10, make it a 9, I give 10 to the tenths. I borrow from the tenths, I make it a 9, I give 10 to the hundredths. I can do all of my subtraction. 10 minus 5 in the hundredths is 5. 9 minus 2 is 7. Bring my decimal straight down. 9 minus 9 is 0. And 3 minus 2 is 1. $10.75. Okay, now this is a story problem. This is how much money you have left over. Every story problem needs to have a sentence. So type in your sentence or write your sentence and come back and check that it is a good one. All right, so if we're going to get totally detailed when we write this, you could have written both answers into your problem. So, you could have said, you and your friend spent $29.25 and 25 cents at Stonefire. Mm -hmm. 
you have ten dollars and seventy five cents left. Of the forty dollars you brought. All right, just check to see if you have anything close to that, or at least you're showing that um, it's money that you have left and money that is spent. Thank you very much. I hope. This helped, and good luck on your homework.